Well, call to order the meeting of the Pasadena yeah, Independent yeah, School District yeah. Board of Trustees in special session on Tuesday, July 12th, 2022, in the boardroom of the administration building, 1515 Cherrybrook Lane, Pasadena, Texas, at 5 p.m. Board members present, Ms. Crystal Davila, Ms. Paola Gonzalez-Fusilier, Mr. Marshall Kendrick, and me, Casey Phelan. Board members absent, Ms. Vicki Morgan, Ms. Nelda Sullivan, and Mr. Kenny Fernandez. Let the record indicate that a quorum of board members is present, that this meeting is duly called, and that notice of this meeting was posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meeting Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. The invocation will be led by Mr. Kendrick, followed by the pledges by Ms. Davila. If you please rise. Can you pray with me? Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for the dedication of our employees to help and make sure that our kids succeed. We thank you for the burden that we have to do this because it's a challenge. And we're so thankful that this district is up to the challenge. Father, we pray especially for our maintenance and uh, people that are working outside and doing that kind of work with the yard work because it's so blooming hot that uh, we just pray that you keep them safe, keep them hydrated, and uh, keep them well. Father, we thank you for your love for us. We, we pray for our country. Father, we need you to bless us and forgive us of the things that we're doing that are so wrong and just heal our country. We ask it. We all ask all these things in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Adjournment to closed session pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.074 for the purposes of considering the appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer, employee, or to, or to hear complaints or charges against a public officer or employee concerning matters related to the superintendent's recommendations to hire administrative personnel and or the superintendent's recommendations related to renewals, non-renewals, and terminations of contracts for professional personnel. 551.071 to consult with the district's attorney concerning matters on which the attorney's duties to the district under the Code of Professional Responsibility clearly conflicts with the Texas Open Meetings Act, to seek the advice of its attorney about pending or contemplated litigation or a settlement offer, and or to consider legal advice regarding items specifically listed on the agenda. 551.072, for the purpose of discussing the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property. We're going to, re we're going to reconvene after closed session as quickly as humanly possible. We're going to reconvene an open session at 539. 5.39. <clears throat> we have no public comments. So consideration and possible approval of administrative personnel. Board Chairman, I move that we approve addenda pages A through H. Second. Motion by Ms. Fusilier, seconded by Mr. Marshall. Any discussion? Well. <laughs> All in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, so we'd like to begin by introducing Mr. Kevin George. He's been approved for the position. It's a lot of excitement. Mr. George has been approved for the position of counselor at Southeastern High School. Congratulations. Do you have any family you'd like uh, to my family. Awesome. <laughs> Well, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. And Davida Redding, who's been approved for. <laughs> approved for the position of counselor at Snyder Middle School. Do you have any family here? I do. I have my family and my daughters and my husband. My sister, I have my day family. <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> Congratulations.
Robin, Robin McCann. Has Robin? <laughs> has been approved for the position of College Now Coordinator at South Houston High School. Congratulations. And welcome to Pasadena ISD. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I have my daughter with me, Lainey Grace McCann, and of course, all of the Persian family. Thank you guys. All right. <laughs> Amy Richard. Miss Amy Richard. <laughs> Miss Richard has been approved for the position of educational diagnostician with special education. Do you have any family here? I have my husband, Kevin, our two boys, Charles and James, and my sister, Emily, and her two kiddos, Adeline and Theo. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, Christy McKinney Johnson. Ms. McKinney Johnson has been approved for the position of educational diagnostician with special education. Do you have any family here? Congratulations. Sandra Dickerson. Ms. Dickerson has been approved for the position of Coordinator of Innovation and Development with Curriculum and Instruction. Do you have any family here? I do. I have my husband, Jeremy, and all my IND family. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> and Catherine Leach, she is not here today. She's on vacation, I think, New York. So be sure to congratulate her. She's been approved for the position of Coordinator of Innovation and Development, Personalized Learning with Curriculum and Instruction. <laughs> and last but not least, Jared Mellon. Uh, he's been approved for the position of assistant principal at Sam Rayburn High School. Oh, bro. Congratulations. Do you have any family here? Chelsea, our daughter's Peyton Cameron, my dad, his family, my mom, friends, my Rayburn family. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. And we all wore blue, just in case you didn't. Yes. <laughs> uh, Sorry, Trojans. Yeah. <laughs> On behalf of the board and the superintendent, welcome to the family, to all of y'all that got recognized today. That's awesome. Fantastic. Uh, none of y'all are required to stay here for the business part of this, so if you want to leave, you're more than welcome to go. You don't or have to stay. stay. Or you can stay. Mm -hmm. We'd love to see you. Possible approval of additional personnel for the 2022-2023 school year in the amount of $430,000. Do I have a here motion? So moved. Second. A motion by Marshall Kindred. Second. Second by Paola Fuselier. Discussion? Any discussion? Board members, uh, just wanted to say about these positions, uh, we need to go ahead and get them hired. Uh, I had talk to you a little bit about the need regarding uh, dyslexia evaluations that are due to recent changes with TEA, but also just our number of special ed evaluations, being able to keep up with that testing as well and being able to provide support for the amount of ARDS that we're going to have this coming school year in reevaluations, which really is about 6,500 or more. So uh, these five will be helpful in adding to the team that's already in place to make sure we stay up to date with those. Okay. Is there any other discussion? <clears throat> All in favor of signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have. Motion carries.
<clears throat> consideration of possible approval of a temporary increase to summer school compensation rates to be paid from existing summer school ESSER summer school or other local funds in the estimated amount of $50,000. Do I hear a motion? Move, so moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Fusilier, second by Ms. Davila. Any discussion? So board members, you'll remember you came and had already approved this for most of our summer school positions. Uh, as you know, federal funds are very particular about how we spend those and what we spend those on. So these positions here, we needed to come back and, and talk about pulling that from local funding. Um, so custodial and cafeteria workers that supported our summer school program, and then our star certified test proctors and non-certified test proctors. So that's the reason you're seeing something similar to what you did before. It's about the funding source. Okay. Is there any and it's still part of the budget. I'm sorry, <laughs> one last thing. It's still part of that budget you originally approved, mm -hmm. but we just kind of want to single out what would not exceed 50,000 toward local funds being pulled. So. Is there any, any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Consideration of possible approval of the 2022-2023 student dress code, PK through 12. Do I hear a motion? So moved. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Fusilier, seconded by Mr. Kendrick. Are there any discussion? I'd I'd like to, oh, go, go ahead, ahead please. Ladies first. Thank you. So I wanted to say thank you uh, for all the hard work um, and this binder and all this stuff that y'all did. So thank you so much. I know the, the DEC put a lot of work into this and there was a lot of input and hours spent on that. So thank you so much. Um, I was glad to see a lot of the changes. I think it'll really help with student morale and, and self-expression. I think that's important and being culturally inclusive, um, especially in a, in a district that's diverse. And also I want to throw in there, um, if you had it, have haven't already looked at um, the changes or the proposed changes. Hopefully, we'll approve um, shorts being <laughs> part of the dress code. It's very, very hot in Texas, so thank you for the changes. Well, you said what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to thank everybody for all the work they did in the background and checking with our districts. And we're much pretty well comparable, except a few things here and there. But it's a good move forward, and I think it's great for our students and great for our teachers and principals. So. Also, I, I know you guys are up against a, a wall when it comes to this because the principals and stuff, they have to get things out pr pretty quickly. So the speed at which you got it done and plus the, the specifics of the way you did it was perfect. So we appreciate it. So are there any other discussions? No, I just, I mean, everyone said what I wanted to say, to be <laughs> honest, because I know y'all worked really hard, you know, like Casey said, within a span of two months. Um, what else? Yeah, I just hope that we can work together with our students in order to, you know, make sure that they have in order to succeed and come to school comfortably. And hopefully this will cause less of a problem for teachers and for principals when it comes to addressing dress code. I know that as a teacher, I didn't spend a lot of time on dress code. Uh, for me, it's 45 minutes, and that's what we're going to spend in the classroom. So I want to make it also more comfortable for teachers. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearing no further business, this meeting is adjourned at no budget work budget workshop. Whoa! <laughs> For information only, there's no action taken. Sorry, that's all right. I'm trying to get y'all out of here. You see what I'm trying to do? You see? You see? So, board members, as you know, we come back uh, throughout the summer and talk about budget. Any changes? We're not seeing a whole lot of changes right now. Remember last time we met and had a budget workshop, we talked about how everybody turned in their wish list or if the world was, you know, full of money, what we would want for our <laughs> students and our staff. And that deficit was ugly. It was right around $65 million. So we rolled up our sleeves and did a lot of work to cut things um, and make sure we narrowed down the priorities. So our updated budget tonight that you have in front of you is showing a deficit around 6.9 million and this includes the approved salary raises that you gave um, have already approved as well as additional positions and cuts to the requested department budgets again in May you gave a 5% raise for T07 and T08 our teaching staff and 3% 
3% of the midpoint for the rest of our staff members. So we want to thank you again for doing that. I've heard nothing but positive comments and words of praise and appreciation from our teachers and other staff members across the district. <coughs> As we move through the next six weeks, we're going to, of course, make you aware of changes to revenue or expenses, and that's kind of how the budget process works, just kind of keeping our ear to the ground if there's any changes, anything coming out of our legislative uh, works as they talk through safety and whatever funding they might give connected to that. Right now, we've not heard of any direct funding um, other than for some uh, materials that might be needed related to safety. Um, I do want to highlight Ben Poppy and his work on this, his knowledge, his expertise that he's bringing to the process, and that we're kind of going through it with a fine tooth comb and just looking at everything related to that. So Ben, if you want to come up, he's going to be one of the people that, of course, has the knowledge to answer your questions. I'll let him say a few words, and then if you have questions, you can go from there. Okay. Well, good evening, Board of Trustees, Dr. Powell. Uh, it's, it's always tough to walk into a budget cycle right in the middle of it. You know, typically the budget's about six months process to develop it. Um, you know, I've been here about a week and a half, and so I've been really, <laughs> really impressed with the teamwork, uh, with the development process, and then starting with a deficit of 65 million, and then prioritizing and sort of and shifting through all that down to 6.9 million. It's really impressive. So, um, and my staff over the next six weeks will go through the budget with a fine through. Uh, very thoroughly to make sure that if there's any adjustments on revenue projections um, or any differences on expenditures that we capture all that and then we can bring back a, a good product for 22-23 and um, we'll bring that back with the final product uh, at the regular board meeting in August. Uh, but at this time there's any questions, um, we'll fill those questions and this is a working document at this point. You know, one, on roller skates, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> one thing Mr. Poppy added at the bottom is just that footnote of ESSER fundings, which mm -hmm. we know are going to go away eventually. Yeah. But that's really helping not only our budget last year, but our budget this year. So we just want to keep reminding folks yeah. that that has helped offset some of the, of course, needs and costs that we have. And they're not necessarily included in the general operating budget, but they're definitely helping keep our programs and our needs of our mm -hmm. students and staff going forward. Board, but eventually those funds will no longer be part of our plan right. so we've got to keep that in mind as we start to process for this next school year mr. Poppy and I've already discussed about starting budget in September even earlier than we normally do and having regular discussions about staff and about stuff and how we're going to transition away from those federal dollars that have been so nice to have as we close that gap and our star score showed that that money paid off we did a lot of closing of the gap, a lot of growth for our students this year, so we have a lot of great things to celebrate. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> any questions? Are there any questions? Any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, no further business. This meeting is adjourned at 554. 554. Not bad, man. Not bad.